I'm Rachel Lappin, co-first author on our new paper about the importance of atmospheric hydrogen in sustaining desert microbial communities and how this process is stimulated by the presence of water. In this paper, we explored how the diverse microbial communities in desert soils persist despite harsh conditions. Traditionally, it's thought that bacteria persist by building up an energy reserve using nutrients that become available during transient periods of hydration. However, in Antarctic deserts, we've observed that trace gases in the atmosphere, particularly hydrogen, are major sources of energy. This is a source that's continually available and does not require water. So in our study, we wanted to know whether atmospheric hydrogen oxidation is also an important energy strategy in other deserts, and additionally, we sought to understand how hydration, like transient rainfall, influences these different strategies. We hypothesized that the communities would switch from building up their reserve to continually using trace gases, depending on the availability of water. So we analyzed four non-polar desert soils, a South Australian desert, as well as the Namib, Gobi and Mojave deserts. In the Australian desert, we saw that the genes for trace gas oxidation, especially hydrogen, were abundant and expressed. And these hydrogenase genes were also very abundant in the other three deserts. We then simulated rainfall in these soils and compared the dry soils with the wet. In the Australian soil, we saw that photosynthetic activity increases when the soils are wet, as we expected. However, measuring the rate of hydrogen consumption, we saw hydrogen oxidation rates also dramatically increasing upon wetting, with low levels of activity in the dry soil. We observed this in all four deserts, and this was contrary to what we saw in Antarctica, where hydrogen oxidation was rapid in the native state. So here are the main takeaways from this paper. Atmospheric hydrogen is an important energy source for soil communities not only in Antarctica, but other non-polar deserts. While we hypothesized that photosynthesis and hydrogen oxidation would happen alternately in the wet and the dry conditions, both of these processes were strongly stimulated by hydration, suggesting that they use these simultaneously to contribute to that energy reserve. We still don't know why hydrogen oxidation is stimulated by water, and future work should focus on further understanding the influences of temperature and moisture on trace gas oxidation to explain the differences in these processes between polar and non-polar desert communities.